Good morning, Coach. How are you? Um, good morning. How are you doing? Uh, I mean, I'm doing okay. I feel like I'm going to have to carry this interview a little bit more with my partner bailing on, on, on a game week. Not even the bye week. Game week. Where, where'd he go? What's going on? He went to Vegas. Uh, went to Ve- <laughs> he, <laughs> he had Vegas, he had Mexico, or he had Austin. Which one of those three would you pick? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Austin, so I, I'd, oh. I'd go to Austin. Okay. Yeah, you- I love Austin. Yeah. Fuck him. Keep him well, weird. I mean, you know, <laughs> Oh, you know, RJ, I mean, that's a no-brainer where he went. So <laughs> that, is, that is a no-brainer. And after McCarthy's interview, Bobby, the OJ picture test came to fruition in Vegas last night. I'll explain that in a second. Uh, but, Coach, uh, let's, let's talk about what's coming up this week. Uh, are the Bears a similar prep for the Eagles offensively because of all the running that they can do and, and hurts compared to Fields? Uh, definitely, I think that's a, that's an excellent comparable. I can see you've been you've been studying up this week. It's, you're off to a great start, but uh, I, I think uh, clearly, you know, when you have the ability to to run your quarterback as a primary ball carrier, you know, it's a, it's a whole different stress that put you know that that's put on your defense. So, and they definitely have that with Justin Fields. What does Jonathan Hankins add to y'all's defense? Well, excellent, excellent run stopper. You know, just and just you know. Just really a very good football player, experienced player. Uh, I've always liked Jonathan's game. You know, going back to uh, you know his days in in New York at the Giants, and uh, you know he's you know got to play in a different defense out there with the you know with the Raiders, and you know I, I think he brings some diversity and, and an excellent skill set, and you know another another good veteran leader. Do you think you'll be able to work him into the rotation on Sunday? How do you see that possibly going? Well, the way we way we've done it this week, and this is a you know this is a great situation to be in, is you know you you just, you have players in a number of positions that are competing to be up. So, and and that's definitely one of the you know one of the positions, the defensive tackles. It, you know, we got a couple guys that are bat, the battling to, to be up, and you know we'll we'll take it all the way through Saturday, and you know we'll make that call. But you know it's uh this is you know you look at you know our numbers on defense. We we have a very very healthy competitive situation over there. Mike McCarthy here on the Diamond Factory Hotline 105.3 The Fan. Coach, we always talk about like trends with you, what's going on in in the sport. Is is the running quarterback kind of making another jump up here? Uh, They had 12 design runs against New England. Uh, Just talk about that in terms of the way the league is is going with with Kyler Murray and Lamar Jackson and and Jalen Hurts. Is that kind of a resurgence here with the running QB? Oh no! I, clearly, without a doubt, I, I think these are these are dynamic players uh, that, you know, I think you're seeing more and more, um, you know, generational players come out of college. You know, in in the in the college game, is I think probably as strong um, as far you know schematically implementation into the pro game than than I recall in the last thirty years. So, um, I, I think this is clearly a a move uh, for some teams, and and I think just like anything, when you when you sit down. In the player acquisition conversations, you know, every every coach has an idea what he wants his team to look like. But you know, this just this gives you another, you know, another avenue to go as far as how you want to play on offense. And you know, and I, I think it's healthy for our league, and it's it just obviously makes it more competitive. Us media people love to say, "Well, are they gonna are they gonna implement the spy? Are they just gonna play Mike as a spy on the running quarterback?" Can you actually just break down? the role and responsibilities of, of, of what a spy does, Coach? Is, is he sitting there playing center field at linebacker and just responsible for the quarterback movement and just shadowing him? Can you just break that down, what, what the spy actually does? Well, I mean, when you when you look at the, the history of the of the spy, you know, adjustment or, or you know, assignment, it, it, it really applies to quarterbacks in the past that were, you know, very good as far as, you know, dropping back and then taking off, you know, because it's, you know, it, it was a pass first, you know, run second. So you always had to have, you know, obviously when you have pass rush, you know, it's a, it's a different attacking mode from the d- defensive front onto the offense. And so, but there is an ability for, for a gap to open up and which is a great opportunity for a running quarterback to take advantage of. I mean, this is different, you know, this, you, you need more than the spy assignment or technique, um, to, to play, you know, Justin Fields and, and these, these super athletic quarterbacks in the league right now, because they're, they're they're a threat on first and second down, just to you know take the snap and and run a quarterback power or a quarterback sweep or you know 
quarterback misdirections, and, and then you got the run pass options. So you got a whole different level uh, of scheme that you have to you have to adhere to. So uh, the spy the spy part of it's not going to you know it's not going to get it done. You have to activate you know all eleven players on defense to 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 accomplish that. Great explanation. You've done your homework as well. Well done. Mike McCarthy every Friday here on <laughs> Sean, Sean and RJ. 105 through the fan. Your attire got a lot of attention yesterday. Were, were you getting asked about, about your bucket hat yesterday? Why, why was that such a story on Twitter? Uh, well, first off, it must have been a very slow day to, for <laughs> know, a bucket hat. Right? To, Even to we say, weren't asked you about that. Media topic. My goodness. Um <laughs> I, just being honest, I'm, I'm Irish and, and and I love the sun here, but it doesn't love me. So uh, I, I just have to. I, 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 the reality is, I should I should be wearing a bucket hat the last twenty years. So you know, better late than never. And he's still disappointing us, Bobby. If you're another bearded individual, he's still going unshaven. I still think it's the winning streak and the way things are going. I saw it yesterday under the bucket hat, still unshaven uh, under there. Uh, Coach, uh, a well, lot. The reality is, my mother's coming to town tonight, so I gotta, oh. I'll definitely be clean shaved. So excellent, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, my parents are coming next weekend, so we can get we maybe we oh, can good. get together or not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, coach. A lot of uh, a lot of fans are looking for more. You're getting trades in in the NFC East with the Eagles and the Giants, and, and some are saying the Cowboys need to go get a receiver. We got the defense set. Let's put this offense over the top. How have you viewed the receiver room so far in terms of getting what you want out of it this season? Uh, I mean, I, I like the balance we have. I think CD has uh, jumped up and you know taken the reins as the number one, number one guy in there, and and I, I think he's you know off to an excellent year. You know, I, I really like what Noah's you know Noah's given us, and you know especially just his versatility, and you know does he does so much of the heavy lifting for us on first and second down. He's been productive with his opportunities in the past game, and you know and he's he's one of our primary players on special teams, you know, and then I, and I, and I like our young guys, you know, I, you know, I like the young way they're developing. It's, it's great to have Michael Gallup back. And, you know, I, I just think Michael needs more and more opportunities. And, you know, I think he's kind of going through the, the course that you, you go through after, you know, after a major joint injury. And, uh, but, you know, he looks great and we just got to keep, you know, finding a way to give those guys some opportunities. How does it really work with a head coach's input? Like during the trade dev, first off, how much has the trade deadline changed? I we used to talk five, ten years ago. You don't make trades in the NFL in terms of getting caught up schematically. Has that changed drastically, and why? I'm I'm I'm, I'm throwing on Foley. What do you mean change up schematically? Uh, the, people used to say, "Oh, you don't get a lot of trades in the NFL like during the deadline because someone's got to come in and learn a brand new system." Or if you're running a four three and this new team is a three four or a backup quarterback, or it's too much to learn in the middle of the season. A, a, a shortened way to say it versus that dumb explanation is: it feels like there's more trades happening today than ten years ago. Do you do you see that? Um, yeah, I, I think I think the reality of it is, um, you know the. The player fitting this scheme, and, and you know, and that that's really, I mean, that's part of the conversation. But I, I think it's, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to value and, and what you want to give up. You know, it's 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 um, you know, it, it's like a business transaction. Frankly, I mean, you, you gotta, you know, you gotta be willing to pay, you know, for something that you want. It's you know, and how much do you want to pay for that? And I, I think it really just comes down to that uh, at the end of the day, and and you know, and obviously. The position of your team, I think, yeah, it gives you gives you maybe a little more energy and uh, to be more aggressive. I, I think that's human nature. But at the end of the day, I think it really comes down to value. What input do you have in terms of being able to chime in on these players throughout the league? You're studying the Cowboys. You're game planning. So when they come to you and say, what do you think about Hankins? Do you get like a film package put together that, that you evaluate? How does that work in your head coaching history? Um, it, I mean, it's it's, it, it's uh, completely different here than than you know the, my last job. But it, the, the, the way it works here is, you know, I, I I take what I call a lap. You know, I always after you know team meeting, go to the offensive meeting, then quarterback meeting. But then at some point, I have to go you know do 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 the uh, press conference. So on the even there on the way over, the way back, you know, it just depends on everything else that's going on. But I. You know, I stop in Will McClay's office at least once a day. You know, sometimes three times a day, and and Will's always 
you know, he's always working, you know, that, that the process of, of evaluation of, of players. So, I mean, you know, we, you know, we've been walk, watching uh, Jonathan for weeks on, on tape. So once, and then once it gets to a point where we th- think there may be an opportunity, you know, there's a cut up that's, that our personnel guys, they do a great job in this area of always evaluating. And it's, you know, then, and then we'll bring the position coach in or, you know, the coordinator, if we think it's, you know, a realistic opportunity just to get, you know, just to get everybody's opinion. Coach Zeke is obviously a warrior. I love his quote about being soft uh, when asked about injuries the other day. Do you think last year was any type of learning lesson? A, a lot of people said, oh, he doesn't look the same in the second half. Respect to him for going out there, but sit him down for a little bit and let him recover. Uh, how, how does that play into this decision whatsoever in terms of maybe giving him a week off before the bye? Uh, I think that's an excellent question. I think you really, when you look at injuries and, and they're, they're, you know, they're specific to the individual, and, and we all know that Zeke, you know, he, he started bouncing around yesterday, and everybody's like, "Slow down." So I mean, because you know, he's uh, he's he's really making a lot of progress. But you know, I think it just speaks to him as an individual. Uh, but you know, this this injury this year is different than the one last year. So I, I think you, you know, with these injuries, we got we got an excellent you know return to play process with Britt Brown and. You just, you know, the relationship that he has with the player, and, and I just, you know, frankly, you just let those guys get to work, and and uh, you know, and when they feel like they're hit the return to play threshold, and then we then we activate them, and it's, uh, you know, it's, I, I just really trust the process to answer your question. So, but every injury is different, and um, and I think you would expect that from Zeke, it just because I mean, the way he goes about it. I mean, he's a, he's a tremendous teammate. You know he doesn't miss doesn't miss anything. I mean he's uh, I'm talking about all the way back for the off season. So I mean he is definitely definitely a warrior. How did Dak look in practice uh, for a second week compared to that first week of trying to shake off the rust against the Lions? Well, I thought it looked I thought it looked really good. I thought he had you know I thought he had a good Thursday practice last week. I, I think you know this this week getting the full load on on Wednesday you know definitely it helps any any quarterback just the ability to get out there and. You know, have full speed drills with with the pass rush around you, and you know the two minute drill yesterday was was really good. Um, so you know, I, I like the way that you know way it ended. It came down to the last play. I, I think that's always good for both sides of the ball. And it, the, the two minute drill comes down to the the last play on the clock, and uh, so I, I think he's having a good week so far. Any concern, coach, for Micah and, and Sam Williams, who who were added to that injury report late in the week? Uh, no, I, I don't have high concern for for Mike. I, I, you know, I just want to see Sam practice on Saturday, so that'll that'll be the final determination for Sam. All right, last one for you. I got a surprise audio clip uh, from Luke Getze, offensive coordinator for the Bears, who was asked about his relationship with you by the Chicago media. He's one of the most influential people in my life. There's no question. Um, uh, never had really a desire ever to, to be a head coach in my life until I got to sit in his team meetings and look at the way that he approached the team, talk to the team, um, the way he was able to be himself, be humble. Look at you, coach. What a nice thing to say. He's a fine young man. I'm very proud of him. But obviously he's on the wrong sideline this week. <laughs> <laughs> coach, uh, best of luck as always. Have fun with the parents coming into town, and we'll talk next week. Unless you bail like RJ and go to Austin. <laughs> uh, we'll be good. Thanks, Coach. Have a great week.